Suguru Gato is one of my favorite Jujutsu Kaisen characters, despite the fact that he doesn't live that long. Gato is only seen in the Hidden Inventory arc and Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. However, I believe that Gato is one of the best written characters Gege has ever done, and despite thoroughly disagreeing with him, his motivations and reasoning are still understandable. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I think to analyze Gato, we should start chronologically. The earliest point we see Gato chronologically is in Hidden Inventory Episode 1. It actually opens on a scene of Gato attempting to come to terms with what happened that day. We see flash forwards to events that will happen in the coming episodes, namely Gato saving Nanako and Mimiko, as well as Gojo and Gato parting ways. This is an amazing cold open to the season and immediately tells the audience what this season will be, an explanation as to what happened to Gato. The first episode shows Gato talking with Shoko and Gojo. It's clear that they're very close, once again bringing up the question of what happened to Gato. This question is pushed on the viewers even further when we see Gojo, Gato, and Shoko discussing the necessity of sorcerers. Interestingly, Gojo and Gato Gato's ideas are flipped here. Gojo questions why people as strong as them are protecting weak, regular humans. Gato counters by saying that it is the duty of all sorcerers to protect the weak. This ideology is one that is repeatedly questioned throughout the entirety of Jujutsu Kaisen, but especially in Hidden Inventory. Should people this strong risk their lives to protect the weak? Sorcerers die all the time due to protecting other humans. If they simply protected each other, everything would be a lot easier. However, is killing weaker humans okay? This moral question is introduced to the viewer here, and it's done exquisitely. The characters and viewer can come up with their own answers for now, but the show will take this to the absolute extreme later on. In this scene, Masamichi also assigns the two to escort Riko, and interestingly, he calls the two of them the strongest, something Gojo is repeatedly called by people in the present. As we'll see later, the question of what being the strongest means is something else that also comes up multiple times throughout the show. Gato once again reprimands Gojo for his braggadocious behavior, to which Gojo once again brushes it off. From the ensuing fight, we see that both Gato and Gojo Gojo are practically invincible in the current Jujutsu world. Although one thing I find very interesting is that in this battle, Gato is clearly putting in a lot of effort to win. Meanwhile, Gojo has to just stand there and he is by default untouchable. Another major player in the hidden inventory arc, and therefore Gato's past, is also introduced around this point. Fushiguro Toji is immediately interesting to the audience due to not only being related to Megumi, but also because he's attempting to kill Riko. The day commences and there are some really nice scenes of Gojo, Gato, Riko, and her caretaker. It's clear that they all get along and plan to give Riko the best final days before she is erased for Tengen. Gato is very sympathetic to Riko and her cause. It's clear that he cares not only about her, but any person not trying to harm others. Although, as I just said, we see that he has no sympathy for curse users who use their powers to hurt others, with him beating up an old sorcerer attempting to get to Riko. After rescuing Kuroi, the four of them spend the day on the beach. This scene, as well as the intro of the show, is kind of heartbreaking, especially if you know what happens to these four. Gato and Gojo especially clearly had a very special relationship that would be destroyed by extenuating circumstances. The knife is twisted even more when Gato expresses concern for Gojo, to which he responds by saying that his best friend is always there to watch his back. As they return to the high school, Gojo lets his infinity go, telling Gato that the whole experience has been extremely tiring. Everything was perfect at this point. Gojo and Gato protected the non-sorcerers, they gave Riko a final fun day, they got rid of some bad sorcerers, and nobody was hurt. And maybe if that happened, the Jujutsu world could have been safe from Kenjaku. Gojo and Gato could still be the strongest together, and Riko Amanai could have lived. But that would have been too easy. The stabbing of Gojo Satoru sends everyone into a panic. Gato immediately questions how Toji even got into the school's domain. In a panic, Gojo and Gato double-team Toji to get him down for a bit, before Gato asks about Gojo's condition. Gojo tells Gato to get Riko to Tengen and that he'll be fine. The ensuing fight isn't really relevant to an analysis of Gato, however it is important that Gojo loses, almost dying in the process. Gato takes Riko and Kuroi to the Tombs of the Star. Kuroi waits behind after saying goodbye to Riko. Gato begins escorting Riko to Tengen before realizing that this may not be what she wants. After all, she is doing exactly what he is doing, sacrificing herself for the purpose of helping other people, especially non-sorcerers. And at this point, Gato doesn't question the purpose of that. However, he still believes that it should be a choice. Kindly, Gato gives Riko the option to return to Kuroi and live her life separate from the sorcery world. To Gato, Riko is innocent, and she should be given the choice to sacrifice herself for the weak or to continue living her own life. And while at this point it's still for noble intentions, I believe this is the first time we see Gato question whether the way the sorcery world works is correct or not. Riko admits that she saw her life as a necessary sacrifice. However, after hearing that Gato and Gojo would be willing to fight Tengen for her, she decides that her life is worth living. Gato reaches out his hand to Riko. As she reaches... 
After the shooting of Riko, Geita would be thrown into a battle with the man who killed the unkillable, the man who brought down Satoru Gojo, the sorcerer killer, Fushiguro Toji. The ensuing battle is really the first and potentially only time we see an extended fight where Geito is going all out. And he truly is strong. He has a lot of technical skill, however, he simply cannot match Gojo. Gojo is stronger from birth. The six eyes and limitless technique make him practically invincible to anyone. Geito simply cannot keep up, and therefore he loses to Toji. Toji keeps Geito alive, fearing for what will happen to the curses he has consumed. During this moment, Toji also says something that would impact Geito forever, saying that despite their strength and their gifts at birth, Geito and Gojo couldn't overcome a monkey like himself. Soon after this loss, Gojo tips the scales by killing Toji after awakening to his true power as the heir of the clan's techniques. Immediately after this, Gojo goes to recover Riko's body from the Time Vessel Association, where Geito meets up with him. The room is full of people non-sorcerers, applauding the death of Riko. Geito is clearly shocked by this, however he remains firm in his beliefs. After Gojo asks him to kill everyone in the room, Geito responds that there would be no point. Gojo then retorts by asking if a point is necessary. He then leaves Geito in a room full of ignorant non-sorcerers, people who don't understand all the sacrifice and tribulation that he and all sorcerers go through to keep them safe. Instead of thanking them, or even simply not acknowledging them, they stand there applauding the death of an innocent teenage girl. This is the point where Geito begins to change. He starts to to view the world differently, especially after seeing the cruelty of non-sorcerers towards those who are essentially their saviors. We see this in the next episode, flashing forward one year, showing the effect Riko's death had on the strongest duo. We see Geito and Shoko helping Gojo train his techniques, with him constantly having Infinity on, mastering reverse curse technique, and he's even beginning to use domain expansion. Geito, on the other hand, is clearly stunted in his growth as a sorcerer. He looks awful. Gojo even asks if he's lost weight, which Geito denies. We go back to the line we heard at the beginning of the series. Since Gojo is the the strongest, he's on missions by himself, Shoko is a healer and therefore is on separate missions, and so all Geito does is find weak curses, exercise them, and consume them. Consuming curses is something only Geito can do, and so only he knows the taste of it, and his description isn't too flattering to say the least. Geito has been fully isolated from his friends after experiencing something traumatic. His PTSD and depression are clear, even with just these few scenes. He constantly tries to tell himself that he did nothing wrong, but while in the shower, as as he relives the memories of what he witnessed at the Time Vessel Association, he cracks. Damn monkeys. Gato is finally beginning to question what he's doing. If everything he's done, all the sacrifices he's making, all the curses he consumes, if it's all to support these cruel non-sorcerers, then why is he doing it? Why is he helping these monkeys? as he sees it. For now, I believe that when Geito says monkeys, he's referring to only the evil non-sorcerers, like the children of the time vessel and Toji. However, soon after, this definition would change. Geito begins talking to Haibara about what it means to be a sorcerer, something Haibara had never really thought about before. The difference between these two is that Haibara looks no further than the surface. People are in need, I help them. The reason for this could be as he says, which is that he just doesn't think about it too deeply, but the other reason could be that Haibara hasn't seen the cruelty of the world. His mindset is the exact same as Geito's pre Rico, and it's clear that he wants to go back to it. After the conversation with Haibara finishes, Geito talks to another special grade sorcerer, Yuko. Yuko says that she believes that the Jujutsu world doesn't actually do anything about cursed spirits. They don't stop them from appearing, they simply fight them when they do. There are two ways to prevent curses from appearing, as Yuko says, which is to either stop cursed energy entirely or to make everybody able to control it. The issue is that for both these solutions, people who can't use Jujutsu must cease to exist. Gato asks Yuko about this, to which she simply asks if he hates non-sorcerers. As I stated before, Gato does not yet hate everyone who is weak, he simply hates the bad ones. Yuko tells Gato that only he can shape his life before leaving. As she leaves, she also tells Gato something I find super interesting, which is that they found another vessel for Tengen. Even though this was bound to happen, I think it really affected Gato to know that Riko's death was entirely pointless. Speaking of death, Gato meets with Nanami after a mission which got Haibara killed. This clearly rattles Geito, with him once again wondering if this is all worth it. Geito's final straw is seeing Mimiko and Nanako trapped in a cage by non-sorcerers for nothing. They are simply scared of their abilities. After a year of being alienated from his friends, dealing with PTSD, watching non-sorcerers continue to live in ignorance about all the sacrifice the people around him put in, and finally, seeing two innocent young sorcerers be caged by these people for nothing, Geito snaps. He proceeds to kill over 100 non-sorcerers, including his parents. This leads to him being sentenced to death by the High Order of the Jujutsu 
Tetsu world. Upon hearing the news, Gojo approaches Gato on the street, asking him what he thinks he's doing. Gato tells him exactly how it is. He isn't kidding. He genuinely believes that this is the way the world should be. Gojo points out the obvious flaw, which is that Gato can't simply kill billions of people. This clearly annoys Gato, the reasoning being that Gojo could kill billions if he so desired. While Gato spent the last year in a state of depression, Gojo spent it furthering the gap in their strengths. Gato was already going to always be second to Gojo, but the past year made that blatantly obvious. They were no longer the strongest together. Gojo alone was. This also brings up the question of killing with purpose, something that means a lot to Gato. The reason he hated being a sorcerer was because there was no purpose to it for him. He was risking his life and watching his friends die for the very people he was saving to remain ignorant, or worse, violent towards sorcerers. Killing non-sorcerers, in Gato's mind, has a purpose. He's healing the world of an inferior species. Gato then asked the famous question, are you the strongest because you're Satoru Gojo, or are you Satoru Gojo because you're the strongest? I believe this question refers to the internal conflict that Gojo felt and would continue to feel. Everybody learned the name Satoru Gojo, but how many people actually knew him? Gato was friends with Gojo for himself, not because he was the strongest. However, he proposes the chicken and egg type question. The question is quite interesting and doesn't really have a definitive answer. One could claim Gojo was simply born strong so it defined him, but another could argue that he had to hone his strength, which he did due to his personality. Regardless, the question leaves Gojo stunned. As Gato begins to turn away, Gojo appears to prepare to unleash Hollow Purple. Gato tells Gojo that he should kill him, as that would have a purpose. However, Gojo can't bring himself to kill one of the only true friends he's ever had his one and only. From here, Gato takes over the Time Vessel Association through brute strength over those he calls monkeys. The final time we see him before JJK Zero is when he wipes blood off his face, declaring that he hates monkeys. The hidden inventory arc shows us three friends who would all go down wildly different paths in life. Something I find extremely interesting is the way that the killing of Rico flipped the ideology of our two main characters. Gojo saw how the weak needed protecting. He wasn't strong enough to save Rico from Toji, and so he would train himself to make sure that he would never let another innocent person die again. Gato, on the other hand, saw how the way non-sorcerers operated wasn't necessarily helping the weak, especially when those same non-sorcerers would cause more harm than curses. Gato's plan for Earth, however, would have one major flaw, which is the flaw with all forms of genocide. Besides the very obvious immorality of killing, if Gato were to kill all non-sorcerers, that would mean that he would have to do essentially exactly what Toji did to Riko. He would be killing innocent people. However, he's twisted it in his mind to say that his reasoning is more noble than Toji. But I digress. The next and final time we truly see Gato is in the Jujutsu Kaisen Zero movie. There isn't really much about Gato here, but we should still take a look. The Jujutsu Kaisen Zero movie follows Yuta Okotsu as he learns more about the curse that has been haunting him since childhood, that of his dead friend Rika, not to be confused with Riko. While the movie doesn't actually have that much in terms of development for Gato, it does contain the final time that we ever see him. Before all that, let's talk about what happens throughout the movie in relation to Gato. The first hint we get of Gato is when we see him as a shadowy figure testing Yuta's ability. When we properly see him for the first time, he's at that church he took over in hidden inventory. Non-sorcerers come to him to have their curse-related problems solved, seemingly for no exchange. In reality, Gato absorbs the curse himself, and in this particular scene, he calls the young woman a filthy monkey who can't even use jujutsu. Gato then announces to a large group that the era of true sorcery is finally beginning, with him declaring war on Jujutsu High, which is what he sees as the shining pillar of modern sorcery. Gato hates Jujutsu High, because to him it represents the aspect of the sorcery sorcery world that needlessly leads young sorcerers to death for weaker people. Gato then menacingly appears on the Jujutsu High grounds and discusses what he thinks of the modern world to Yuta. During the conversation, Gato calls Maki a monkey, which is what leads Yuta to not be swayed by him. As Gato attempts to apologize, an old friend greets him. The interaction between them is short, but it's clear that Gato doesn't actually hold much animosity for Gojo. The same cannot necessarily be said the other way around. The whole plan is that Gato will create chaos in Shinjuku, meanwhile he will personally fight Yuta in an attempt to absorb Rika. While the main sorcerers are all busy in Shinjuku, Gato attacks Maki, Inumaki, Yuta, and Panda. All but Yuta go down as he attempts to keep Gato at bay using Rika. During this battle, we hear Gato talk more about how his ideals have evolved. They're generally the same as before, just with more hatred, saying how he hates how the weak avert their eyes to those stronger than them. Yuta points this out for what it is, a simple-minded outlook of a man trying to play god. The battle continues on, with Gato unleashing his Uzumaki attack on Yuta, a combination of over 4,000 curses. Yuta counters using Rika and actually ends up winning. As Gato limps away from his demise, Gojo catches up with him. He asks Gojo 
Gojo what took so long, mirroring what Gojo said to him when he visited the church for the first time. He asks if his family is safe, showing that he wasn't manipulating his henchmen and that he really cared for them. Gojo assures him that they're okay, before Gato calls Gojo out for sending Panda and Inumaki when he knew Gato could kill them. Gojo remarks that he knew Gato would never kill young sorcerers. Gato's final words affirm his hatred for non-sorcerers, but he also says that he never hated any student of Jujutsu High. He simply couldn't feel satisfied in the world that he lived in. No matter what, his life felt meaningful meaningless, but although short-lived, the church gave him a reason to keep going. That reason was genocide, but it still gave him a reason. Gojo then tells Gato something that we as the audience don't hear, which to my knowledge, we are never told about. What Gojo said here could be literally anything, but I'll just leave it at him telling Gato that this is it. Gato remarks that Gojo should at least kill him with a curse, and finally, Gato Suguru is killed at the hands of Gojo Satoru. The film concludes with Gojo giving Yuta back the ID Gato stole. When Yuta asks how he got it, Gojo remarks that it's from a friend, his one and only. And I know you could say Gato reappears in the scene of Gojo being sealed or in some flashbacks, but to me, that is the end of the important stuff. Overall, Gato is one of my favorite Jujutsu Kaisen characters. He goes through so much change in such a short amount of time, and seeing the metamorphosis of a brave and talented sorcerer into a deranged genocidal killer is so interesting to me. And that brings us to the end of the video. If you enjoyed and want to see more videos like it, make sure to like the video so that I know that this is what you want to see, and thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.